Hello guys, how are you? Uh, my name is Master. So today I'm going to be teaching the 12 minutes. So I'm going to be focusing more on calculus. So I'm on many channels today. I'm live on many channels, Facebook, uh, YouTube channel, and also in TikTok. If you go to those three options, to those three social medias, you'll find me in this teaching. So don't be surprised. There are many students who are joining in this matter. They are not only in what's Facebook. Some of them, they are in Microsoft Teams. So don't be surprised when some people, some students, they are able to ask questions when I'm teaching here or when they are able to talk. I hope everyone will be able to listen and ask and in questions. So when we talk about calculus, the first thing that I'm going to talk about when you are dealing with mathematics uh, in calculus, you have to know about the limit. Limit. So when I say limit, you have f prime of x. f prime of x is equal to limit when h approaches zero. So this limit when h approaches zero of f of what? Of x plus h minus f of x. So I'm in a hall, guys. I'm in a class. So I see, I hear that there's some vehicles over divide by h. So what it means, we are trying to derive. This is like finding a dy. It's like we are trying to find dy over dx. But when we are trying to find dy over dx, dy over dx is the same as you are finding y prime or as you are finding f prime of x. So when you are finding dy over dx, so this, we call this the first, it's the first principle, first principle, first principle, first principle. So when we call it the first principle, in this first principle, you are going to find the y over the x, but using this formula. So the question will be very strict, or the will be very strict for you. The most important part, let me teach you, as I'm teaching you math guys, let me teach you also a strategy so that you can pass well. The most important part when you're answering, understand what the question asks you. You can say, derivate, the question will be specific, derivate, with the, with the first principle. Then I bet with the word with the first principle to calculate this. They can give you a very simple question, like y equal to x squared. Let's assume we have y equals to x squared. You have to derivate this with the first principle. So when we derivate this equation, which is x squared with the first principle, they may use this formula. Don't just go and just derivate fast. So let's me okay, so I, I forgot my gas. I didn't have it there. It's fine, I'll just use my jacket. I will wash it. So now we are going to first derivate using the word the first principle. So when we derivate y, which is equal to x squared, this is a simple, a simple equation of degree of polynomial of degree two. So if I have to use the first principle, my f prime of x is going to be equal to limit when h approaches zero, and then when there is f of x plus h, we are going to substitute x plus h in x squared. So which means I'm going to say bracket x plus h squared minus f of x, our f of x. Remember, even if I write y, this is still the same as f of x. So it's going to be minus x squared divided by h. So when x said x squared divided by h, so now when you have that equation, you can now, let's finish it up, we can say this is equal to limit when h approaches zero, of you can simplify this x plus h. x plus h is going to be x squared, but normally, I know you guys are going to need you to do this x plus h first, in bracket x plus h, in bracket minus x squared over h. So after that now, we can say this is equal to limit when h approaches zero. So you're going to multiply, you just multiply this x times x, you're going to get x squared, and then x times h is going to be plus xh, plus again h plus x is the same as x, xh, plus h squared minus x squared, this x squared there, right? minus x squared, all divided by H. So now we're gonna group the like terms. So when we group the like terms, we're gonna see that this x squared and this x, they are going to cancel each other. Then we're going to be left with xh plus xh because they are the like terms. 
we are going to say this is the same way, right? Read it. When h approaches 4 of what? 2xh over plus h squared there over h. So when we have this, we can see that we have h here and also h there. We can factor, we can take out h. When we take out h, we will see that we can rewrite this as limit when h approaches 0 of h in brackets 2x plus h over h, whereby this h will cancel with this h, then we're going to be left with what we're going to remain with, it's going to be limit when h approaches 0 of what? 2x plus h. Normally, as a student, I know the here in this equation says when h approaches 0. It didn't really say x, h is equal to 0. So don't say, oh, I'm going to substitute h. You just know that, you can just say that, okay, we're going to substitute 0, then h. Then if it's 0, h, then, then, then mainly you just write it as equals to 2x. So that's how you solve it. So now you might, okay, we got 2x. Let me write it properly, 2x. So now you have 2x. Our equation was y equals to x squared. So we have a rule that says if you want to find y prime, if you are not used to using the first principle, you can use it. You take, if you have x, by y equals to x, to the power n. This is a degree of n. So if you want to find our y prime, then you know y prime, you are going to take this n down, then it's going to be x, n, in brackets x, then you subtract n by 1, which is going to be n minus 1. So this is the rule. So if I have this equation which says y equal to x squared, and I have to, and I have to what? I have to dis derivate this. I have to find a y prime. My y prime is going to be because I take 2 down, and then I write my x, and then it's 2 minus 1 using this, this rule. Then which means my y prime is going to be equal to 2 x, which is exactly the same as that one when we use the first principle. When we use the first principle. So this is how you normally do that equation. So we're going to do more of questions based on the calculus, calculus, the chapter of calculus, based on derivative. So we're going to do more of the derivative today. Sorry guys for leaving my duster. I left my duster. It's holiday today. I'm going to teach and I have to go out also and see my friends. All right, so we have done that kind of, I have shown you that when you have y equals to x to the power n, you can do a y prime is the same as n x n minus 1. What if you can be given an equation of f of x equals to 1 over 3 x cubed x to the power 4 minus 2x squared minus 1. So most of the, many of you guys, many of the students, when they see a fraction, they get confused. Don't get a, a, a confused when you see fraction. Fractions, they are the same as numbers. Just treat it as 1 over 3. So what I have to do is I have to find my f prime of x. So if I have to find my f prime of x, I'm going to take 4 down. I'm going to say first 1 over 3. You can even use multiply by 4. You take 4 down, then you write x. 4 minus 1, we know it's going to be 3, minus 2, multiply by 2, 2 down, it's going to be 2x, 2 minus 1 is just x. But when you differentiate, when you differentiate, when you differentiate, derivative of 1, of a constant, 1 we normally call it a constant. We call it a constant. I know this word normally in high school, they don't use it, that this is a constant. But I will teach you today that when you see a number, it is a constant. So when you differentiate a constant, it's equal to zero. So you just leave it as it is. So it's like plus zero, but we can just ignore it. We act like we didn't see it because it's a number. Then, now, you will see that your f prime is going to be four. One over three is just like here is one. Four, one times four is going to be four over three x squared. Minus two times two, is what is 4x. Then you are done. If it's 4 marks, then which means they are going to mark you when the marker, let me teach you how they mark. You must be very, you must, as a grade 12 student or as a high school student, you must make sure that you understand how they are going to mark your script. You must know how they mark your script. They are going to first give you for this one and this one, 
and the final answer you're gonna get two, which means this kind of question you deserve to have, it will be out of four. They want to first see that you understand the logic and then the final answer. You understand how to do something. Mathematics is not just about getting the answers, it's about understanding the logic. We want to see if you can reason logically. So this is how we deal with this kind of uh, calculus. You guys you are going to get more of the calculus based on polynomials or polynomial equations. And then you're also going to get uh, tested based on trig. They are going to give you a trig question. When they give you a trig question, they can give you a bounty. But this one I'm not, I don't know if I should teach you guys, but let me just teach you. You will have a function. I have seen this kind of question before. They will also treat you based on the square root, but I wanted to go for three functions. But let's that by also apply when you are given a square root. So let's say you have a root, which is square root of 1 over x cubed plus minus 1. What are you going to do with this kind of question? You must always remember that the square root is the same as in brackets. 1 over 2. When I say brackets, whatever that is inside the square root. Let me indicate like that. So if we have this function, I can rewrite my function if I don't want to make a mistake. Y equals to 1 over 3, 1 over x cubed in brackets minus 1 to the power 1 over 2. To the power 1 over 2. So if I have to differentiate y prime, y prime, they don't really, I don't know if they do in your grade but I think they don't really tell you that this is a chain rule. We call this a chain rule. You are going to use, apply the same method. You are going to take down 1 over 2. It's going to be 1 over 2 in brackets 1 over x cubed minus 1. You write it as it is. Then you say 1 over 2 minus 1. You're going to get negative 1 over 2. Then you differentiate what is inside. What is inside is 1 over 3. 1 over x cubed minus 1. So when we differentiate this, remember when you see 1 over x to the power 3 is the same as x to the power negative 3. So which means if I have to differentiate x to the power negative 3, I know that x to the power negative 3 is going to give negative 3 x to the power negative 4 is minus 1. So which means here I'm going to write this side. I'm going to say in x. You can even put a bracket to say it's going to be 1 negative 3 x to the power negative 4. But when you differentiate 1, it's just a constant. We know it will leave it as it is. Because it's a number. So when after this one, what you can do now, you can just group it. You are done. You are already done. You can just group it that, okay, my y prime equals to negative 3 over 2. This negative 3 over this 1 over 2 in x to the power negative 4. Negative 4, remember, you can take it x to the power negative 4. is the same as 1 over x to the power 4. You can just, okay, over 2. Let me rewrite it. Negative 3 over... 2x to the power 4 in brackets this one also you can write it as what dot 1 over 1 over x cubed in brackets minus 1 to the power 1 over 2 1 over 2 we know that it's a square root so instead of this which means i can finish up this equation then i can say okay this equation is going to be negative 3 over 2x to the power 4 in 1 over Square root, when I say 1 over square root of that, it's going to be 1 over square root of 1 over x cubed minus 1. So, just to do that, you have differentiated that equation. But this is how simple it is. So, I see that these days in the literature, they are also, they also, you are also required to know to differentiate things. Trigonometry. So, I'm going to give you a background. Today I'm not really teaching a trigonometry, but I'm going to give you a background about the trigonometry. You have y equals to, we're going to use, we have cos of x, sine of x, and tan of x. So these are the most important trig that you must know, cos, sine, and tan. And you must also know their reciprocal. The reciprocal, of course, is what we are talking about, the reciprocal. The risk problem, of course, is 1 over sec, sec x. I mean, the risk, the risk, the risk, 
reciprocal of sine is cosec, cosec x. And then you can cosec x normally, you use CSC. You abbreviate it with CSC and with 10 is, uh, uh, the reciprocal of 10 is what? 1 over 10. 1 over cosec, 1 over cosec equals to sine. Right? It's not the reciprocal, but the reciprocal is sec. This is a reciprocal. Cosec is a reciprocal, but when this is equal to 1 over cot x. So, but the reciprocal are only sec without 1 over. 1 over is equal to cosec. And then 1 over cosec equals to that and so on. So the reciprocal are for cos is sec x, and for sine is cosec x, and for 10 is cot x. So when you are given a question, they ask you to differentiate. Let's assume it's a sine of x. So, y prime of sine x, you must remember that, is equal to cos, cos x. And then if you are given y equals to cos of x, y prime of cos x, this is something that you have to remember. You have to remember every day if you are doing mathematics, unless otherwise you want to forget math, you can memorize, you can cram them, then when you pass, you forget. Then one y equals to cos x is equal to the y prime negative sine x. And then for 10, y equals to 10x. 10x is sec x 10x. Okay, sec x not sec x, it's sec squared x. y equals to, y prime is going to be sec squared x. So normally students, they forget this one. This one I know is very tricky. They forget how to work it out. They forget that y prime equals to sex, sex squared x. How do you know that? How can we prove that this is exactly the right? I want to prove it to you quickly. Let me do that. I don't like using my jacket. I have to use it today. Yeah. So we're going to start by proving why 10x equals to sex x as when you differentiate it. Remember, 10 of x is the same. You can write a sign x over cos x. When you want to write that, when you can write it that, then d over dx of 10x, we can use something called a quotient rule. So when we use something called a quotient rule, we are going to square cos x, which is going to give us cos squared x. Then we're going to differentiate sine x already told. What is sine x? Is cos x. Then you multiply it with cos x, it's going to be cos x again. You say minus, then you differentiate cos x is going to be negative. You're going to write negative sine x, you multiply it by negative sine x, multiply by sine, you're going to be sine x. So now after having this, we will see that we have cos squared x plus sine squared x over cos squared x. So according to the identities, cos squared x plus sine squared x equal to 1. You must remember this identity. 1 plus, you must remember that cos squared x plus sine squared x equals to 1. And then sine squared x equals to 1 minus cos squared x. And you must remember that cos squared x equals to 1 minus sine squared x. So which means we can rewrite this as 1 over cos squared x. When we write it as 1 over cos squared x, I told you that 1 over cos squared x, which means it's going to be what? Which means there was something that I did wrong there. Yeah, I will have to correct it when I was teaching you guys about the reciprocal. 1 over cos squared x, we know that 1 over sine x. 1 over sine x equals to sec, I think, equals to cos sec. Cos sec x. And then 1 over cos x equals to sine, equals to sec. X. So which means if we put squared x, it's going to be sine squared x. It's going to be sec squared x. So 1 over cos squared x is going to be sec squared x. So we just, I just prove it to you how you calculate, when you calculate 10x, how do you get sec squared x. So that's a proof. So I will check maybe what you guys are talking. Let me see if is there anyone who raised their hands so that I can see and then answer your questions. All right, guys.